Right, what we're going to show you here is how to make a brake pipe. Sometimes on cars, uh, the brake pipes might need to be replaced due to corrosion or through leaking. So when we usually take the old brake pipe off, we'd measure it against the new one and make sure then cut it to the right length. What we're going to do here, though, is uh, we're going to make a brake pipe, uh, roughly speaking, around about sort of... Uh, 100 mil long, so maybe about 105 just to make sure that the pipe's there. So Derek's going to measure it at 105, get the edge, and then using the brake pipe cutting tool here, he's going to screw that in and that's going to cut the pipe. When you're using that, it's important that you just turn it so it starts to begin to get tight, but not too tight. You don't want to crush the pipe, you want to cut it. It's just checking the length there, making sure it's correct. Screw it in, and when you're screwing it in like that, you start rotating the brake pipe cutter around the pipe, tightening it every so often until you feel it's starting to go loose. And that way, you're ensuring that you're going to get a nice straight cut across the brake pipe. Right, now that we've got that off, we can have a look at it, and as you can see there, that's a nice cut right across on both sides. We then have to look at the ends on the brake pipes. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to fit a male end and a female end. Uh, that way we can show you the different shapes on the end of the pipes that we need to do. So what we do to make the brake pipe to put the ends on is we use a brake pipe flaring tool. With this, we've got different attachments here. Um, so we always have to make sure that when we look at the plates we're way to use, that you'll see this one has got a flat edge. There's also one with a sort of curved edge going in the way as well. Uh, so just make sure that you've got a matching pair there. So the pipe will go in there like that. The clamp comes round and then Derek will just make sure that it's pretty much flush with the bit at the back there. And for the male end, we will go on to OP1. So with OP1, and that is the size of the brake pipe we're using, 3 16 So that will go in, you'll put a little turn on there. And what that does is that puts a little cone shape on the end of the brake pipe. And as you'll see there, he's got a little dome on the top there. So we'll slide that brake pipe end on there and you'll see it's a nice flat join there. Before you put, before you start doing the other side, always make sure that you put the other brake pipe on. So that's a female end that's going to go on that end. Okay, so make sure that it's on the correct way around. With the female end, what we have to do is again, pop it in there and have it just about flush with it, maybe sticking through ever so slightly but you have to then do to get a female end. So you obviously you've got a dome end on one side and then you'll have a sort of indent side on the other one. So we do up one first. And then this time we turn the top to up two. And that will put, press the end in and we'll see this when it comes out. And as you'll see there, it goes in the way there. There's a wee concave bit on the end. And what that does is, so when the male end joins the female end, we've got a matching shape there that will connect together. And when we tighten up those two bits together, it'll form the pipe correctly. So Derek's got the tool here for bending the brake pipes into shape. And his idea is he's going to do a 40 mil section and a 60 mil section. So he's just going to put a bend one way and then one the other. So there we go. This will be it, maybe it'll be 50, 50, right? <laughs> yeah, those two. 55. I got it wrong. Uh, it's close enough, it's close enough. So the reason we use the, the bending tool is that way that we're not looking for the pipe to get crushed. Sometimes when you, if you try to bend that by hand, sometimes you can kink the inside edge of the brake pipe there and crush it. And then that way when you put it onto the, the braking system, the pressure would build through there and you might end up with air still in the brake system and a poor braking efficiency.